uh, Green family, uh, this is one of my historic great brothers. Uh, we connected back in the LRB radio days in 2007. One of our first repatriate that literally you know, laid the foundation for us to build this program as far as our Africa tours and investment. Uh, Green is my brother. I just want you to give a good introduction about yourself and then talk about uh, other things like this beautiful earth bag system that we talked about back in the days. Greetings, my name is Dahudi Mahali. Uh, I came to Ghana in 2007 with Bamani on Africa for the Africans. And uh, I, I stayed a, a month after the tour. I stayed with David and it was hot in his house. So I went back to the States and took up a class of sustainable living. And uh, when I came back to Ghana the, the next year, 2008, I met Charles and uh, Mohammed, and uh, we went around, I had my solar panels and showed them everybody that I met before, and my solar panels and everything. And uh, so my cousin called me when I was in Cape Coast, we had, had our, our party, me and Bamani are Scorpions, so we have a party. And uh, so my cousin called and said, Bamani, uh, Obama won. I said, oh, we in trouble. So I went back to California, packed up my stuff, and moved here in 2009. I've been here ever since. And it was the best move I made. And uh, I'm into sustainable living, and uh, that's about it. Do you have any questions? Yeah, some of the things I want to talk about. Uh, uh, I was literally on a program in, uh, in 2007 with uh, Kidi Awadu, uh, the conscious roster on LIB uh, radio. And um, I don't even remember my exact conversation because I was still even new to the business. Uh, and I was just talking about uh, us going to Ghana in, uh, in October of 2007. And then next, you know, um, you know, you call in. I'm, I'm brother Dahudi Mahali from Oakland, California, and you just had some, you just had yeah, this strong was, energy, and I was like, I like this guy time. right here. This is the kind of people that we need. Yeah, I was and, listening to Kitty at that time, and uh, I heard you going to Africa. I, said, I wanted to go, so I called you and said, Hey, can I go? I already had a ticket. Uh, I just need to pay for the room and board. I already paid for the ticket and everything. I had the ticket already paid for and everything, so. I, so I got here in 2007 with Bamani. Uh, I think I gave him about $2,000 for the room and board for in the... Yes. In the yeah, it was, it was different back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the cost of everything yeah. like was I said, so I much reasonable. A month after the tour, the tour went back in October. I left in December. I got on a plane with just a short sleeve shirt and sandals and everybody else is putting overcoats up in their overheads. And they're looking at me like, that man is crazy. <laughs> So when the, when the plane landed in New York, and the door opened, that cold air hit me. Oh, Lord. Man, I had to go to Cali from, from there to California. I froze. When I got on the plane to California, I asked the stewardess for four blankets, two for my feet and two to wrap around me. I was so cold. But that was my tour. That was my trip. And I had a wonderful time. I came back the next year. Came back in 09 and been here ever since. Thank you, Bamani. Thank you very much. Well, appreciate you, brother. Uh, you know, you're a living uh, proof of uh, you know of that you know program that we built for repatriation All your works. You can do the same thing if you want. If you want to come here and live, it's a little challenging, but you could do it. And and one of the things we talked about that time was about the earth bag building, and that's when you were uh, working with our good brother. Uh, Brandon, Brandon over there right. at, um, at Fiancra. Coach. Well, it's from Migrating Culture, but he was working with Fiancra. That's back right. in the days when we, oh, we, yeah, we all put our energy together to make Fiancra the African diaspora right. community in Ghana. But you know, th we, we learned from the situation and unfortunate things happen, but uh, all of us end up evolving from that situation yeah, to, to where... I wanted to live there. I came actually to live there, but uh, that fell apart and fell through. So I, luckily I got some land and... Uh, Got with Brandon. Actually, Brandon didn't want to. He didn't like older people. But <laughs> he said older people just talk. So wow. when I when I got when I met him, I said, Brandon, I need some drawings. He said he did, he looked at me like uh, this old man is not going to do anything. 
So I gave him 2,000 US dollars and said, give me some drawings, I want an uh, earthbag building. I want my walls to be two feet thick or more. And so he came up with some drawings and this is what we came up with. All right, perfect, so let's step back and let's look at this. I actually build a straw building, but I didn't find the straw here. Let's see if someone can uh, hold this also for him so we can uh, see it clearly. And just want him to um, explain the process of this. Well, perfect, brother, appreciate you. So family, this is uh, the earth bag building. So tell us and break down the concept of why you chose to go in this direction and who was actually doing this kind of building because be, it's popular now. I wanted to be warm. I don't want to, to be cool. And uh, when I was at the Vives house at nine o'clock in the morning, it was smoking, I was hot. So when I went back to the States, I took up a class of solar, solar technology and sustainable living. And they had a, a straw barrel building. They were building the straw barrel building. So uh, when I came here, I wanted that concept, but I couldn't find the straw. So Brandon came up with the bags. My walls are two feet thick or more. And uh, <laughs> I'm 20% cooler than all these buildings that you see right now. So you don't have an air, air conditioning system I, in there? I have a handicapped daughter that I just put an air conditioner in. But for, say, for 18 or eight years, nine years, I've been living without air conditioning. So. Uh, as the, the maintenance of the, um, the building, uh, no, as it held up, or do you have no, to do a lot of maintenance on it? No, the maintenance is basically the paint on the outside because the sun, the sun eats the paint up because it's so hot. So every, every three, two years or three years, I, I do a paint, but inside is cool. And maybe I paint inside. But the building's there. It's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, you hit, a, hit it with a truck. The truck was spoiled before my building was. <laughs> <laughs> is, that just, is that just plastic? Uh, I covered the outside with mud and uh, very little concrete, very little cement, because cement cracks. So I use more mud uh, so that you won't have no cracking or expansion. How are the materials different from what is used now in this area? How are the materials different and well, what makes it more sustainable? Still here. I use the, the, the red clay, the lactrate, and that's that's all around here. And um, and with the, using the, uh, the lactrate, it's thicker and it's harder. You just wet it, and it lasts longer. Most of the buildings in, in Kamasi uh, are made out of the lactrate, so they last longer. What's the mm. material of the, the white? Oh, the, the, these here are polyester bags. Uh, filled with dirt. They just throw yeah, yeah. So it's, see, that's it's not just ordinary bag. dirt. Yeah. It's, it's the latrate. It's the red clay. It's, that's not ordinary, ordinary dirt. Okay. All right. So you just. Well, I, I investigated. You can't put. You put already dirt in it. It's not going to be hard. All right. You you might have problems later on because the dirt is going to eat up the bags. The latrate is not eating up the bags. All right. And uh, and it's harder. So. So I have a. I have a bombshell. <laughs> bombshell for real? <laughs> Basically, yeah, if I put uh, steel in the windows, I'll be secure I'll be, from radiation. Radiation wouldn't even go in there. So what if I bring a naval destroyer up right by uh, Lake Volta uh, and, 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 la and, <laughs> you know, and launch a missile at you? <laughs> okay, yes, one, um, in terms of sewage, how do you <coughs> deal with that? Electricity, how do you deal with that? Um, and um, how many rooms do you have in your house? Two bedrooms. I had a workshop, but since I had the fire, I turned my workshop into a bedroom. Now I have two bedrooms. The sewer, uh, I have a, a big tank under the ground that everything goes into and dissolves there. Or every few years, I have a tank, a truck to come up and suck it out. Electricity, I'm hooked to the grid. But when the grid goes out, and it does go out a lot, I got my solar. Right? I got 800 watts of solar hooked up, so my icebox can run at the same time as it was living. Uh, I turn off for the television, just have my icebox, so I need my food. <laughs> <laughs> so, one question, go ahead. Hey, you said that there were some challenges when you first got here. Can you share some of the challenges you had? Uh, challenges, well, basically for me, all the bad roads and the traffic. Uh, going, I, when I first got here, I was going to a crowd like three times, four times a week. 
And I live in the coastal boat, and that's like two hours away from across. So with the traffic, it was almost like three hours. And my driver at that time uh, is Mike, and he was like a, a, a goody two-shoes. He would let the chochos in. The chochos would come by and, and get in. So we would push back and push back. So every time I, I got tired of being pushed back. <laughs> so I told Mike, hey, no more letting anybody in. So Mike now is a, he doesn't let nobody in. He's not a goody two-shoes anymore. Did that cost more than a normal house? No, all the, with the land and everything at 2009, 2010, about 25,000. How much is a normal house here? Here? Right now? The same house without that material. Now? More. Of course, more. Oh, this is 2023. The prices are outrageous right now. So Man. what are you talking about, like 75000 About that or more. Right. Uh, actually, at that time, if I didn't have to truck everything in, my, my house, see the bags, it comes in a bundle, a thousand in a bundle. And at that time, the bundles were only 200 CDs. So I used about three bundles. So that's two, four, 600 CDs. So my house would only cost me 600 CDs. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know. But I had to truck things, I had to truck the, the, the red clay in, the stone in. So that and cost me a little bit. Plus, the, plus the, the labor. All the red clay came from Oh, yeah, yeah. You all could do it? Come on. Have you done a building house? Yeah, they, oh, Eric came, uh, Sister Naya, she has an earth bag building. Uh, and uh, Brother Eric, he had a beautiful building, sold his building, the people love it. He's building another building. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few of them here. Well, you know, it's interesting to me because you say sustainable. So right now the United Nations is looking for sustainable projects and we just finished, we just visited a school that needs two buildings built. And so if we're able to find sustainable projects and things like that, we could probably do some things by suggesting projects for different communities and people in Ghana using the funds from the United Nations. They're looking for sustainable projects. So that's why I was asking about the materials and have you done it before yes, and how much it costs. All the materials is here, yes. It's a funding. There's a lack of funding, so you know. So, are you asking me? What are you asking? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> but I have a crew. I have a crew that, if you need a crew, I have yes. some guys that put my building up, or that's in the village that's still around that can put your building up for you when you do work. That's mm -hmm. if you're interested. I. Well, it would be two buildings no for problem. a school. You just supply the transport to, to where the area is. Mm -hmm. and how the room and board for the guys, and that's it. And they'll build it. Yeah. We're, we're paid, though, you have to pay them. So, I didn't, maybe you said this and I didn't hear you. Do you have your own garden? Uh, and do you cook outside or inside? I have a garden, yes I do. I have some peas growing and some planting growing. Uh, I'm actually, my house is right by the water, so I have waterfront property and I have a, a ravine. I have a lot of things growing down in my ravine. Yeah, it's beautiful. So did you, you, did you, you said you raised your hand, did you saw it on Watermeyer, right? Yes. yes. All right, so you saw how, how pretty it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so you cook outside or inside? No, I have a stove inside, yeah. yeah. So how far is your house from here? Can we see it? Not an auto route. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to see you. Okay. Oh, it was at one point. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We until we had some unfortunate happen in the area, and it just really oh. took us all to bad storm. Two of our si elderly sisters were um, murdered and, and buried in shallow graves, and it just I just stopped going there. It just it just it broke all of us because we we are all working together to build one community called Fianca. All of us are putting all of our energies, our background, and it just, it's, you know, it's, yeah, this, uh, was it like eight years ago? Yeah, and it's just, so, okay. but uh, we know, we'll make sure we get some kind of recording. Uh, I'm still around for another week, and, you know, even if we have to come by and uh, check you, uh, me, me and Yao, or me and someone else, 
uh, we can always just do something. That'd be cool. Yeah, so. But I, I want to say, any of you can go to YouTube and, you and it will show everything that's on there that he has done because he right. talks about it thoroughly. And if you don't get it, you just repeat and look at it again. <laughs> Thank you, Vera. I didn't yeah. know it was on YouTube. All right. So that's it. That's me. Thank you. Right. So, and this is my this is my son. This is my adopted son. Uh, when I came uh, in in 2008, he helped me get around. And if I get stuck someplace, I call him. He would stop what he was doing and come and get me. <laughs> this is my son. And this is my business my business partner also. I, I, well, appreciate you, brother. Uh, so the journey continues, family, and uh, and thank you, Bamani. Thank you very much for bringing me here. Yes, absolutely, man. That's what we do, and thank and you for, thank you for here, sharing Bermani, your story and sharing your energy. Here, and I'm going to probably die here and be buried here. Too. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, All right. Absolutely, All right. family. Thank you, King.